subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. In this lesson, we will go through Google Cloud's Compute Engine service. In previous lesson, we had a brief introduction about Compute Engine. Now we'll see, how we can create a virtual machine on Google Compute Engine. So let's get started. On your Google Cloud dashboard, first select the project, in which, you want to launch your virtual machine. Here we'll launch our virtual machine in the project, My Project 2. Now, to go to the Compute Engine page, click on the navigation menu. Then click on Compute Engine. Now before we launch our virtual machine, let's take a quick tour on the features available in the Compute Engine. First, VM Instances. An instance is a virtual machine, hosted on Google Cloud's infrastructure. You can create an instance, by using the Google Cloud Console, the G Cloud command line tool, or the Compute Engine API. We'll discuss about instance groups later. Next is, Instance Templates. An instance template is a resource, that you can use to create virtual machine instances. Instance templates are a convenient way, to save a VM instance's configuration, so you can use it later, to create VMs, or groups of VMs. You can quickly create VM instances, based off of a pre-existing configuration using instance templates. Instance templates are designed to create instances with identical configurations. So you cannot update an existing instance template, or change an instance template after you create it. Sole Tenancy lets you have exclusive access to a sole tenant node, which is a physical compute engine server that is dedicated to hosting only your project's VMs. Use sole tenant nodes to keep your VMs physically separated from VMs in other projects. Sole Tenancy is appropriate for specific types of workloads, for example, gaming workloads with performance requirements might benefit because they are isolated on their own hardware. Next is, Machine Images. Compute Engine offers many pre-configured public images, that have compatible Linux, or Windows operating systems. Use these operating system images, to create and start instances. Compute Engine uses your selected image, to create a persistent boot disk for each instance. By default, the boot disk for an instance, is the same size, as the image that you selected. If your instance requires a larger persistent boot disk than the image size, you can resize the boot disk. In the image section here, you can see a list of all machine images. Next, Storage. You can fulfill any additional storage requirement for your project from here. In the Zones section, you can see all the active and available zones for your project. Now, let's create our virtual machine. Go back to the VM Instance section, and click Create. Give your instance a name, here we'll name our instance, My Instance 1. Now, we'll select our region, and zone. You should note, that each zone, have a different pricing. We select a zone based on different factors, like, from where our data is coming. Now, we'll choose a machine family. We have general purpose, memory optimized, and compute optimized. More on this later. For now, just select general purpose. Then we'll select our machine type. For small tasks we generally select micro. You can check your estimated costs too, from here. We can select our machine according to our project needs. Note that, different machine types have different pricing. We'll change the access scopes, to allow full access to all cloud APIs. And for firewall, we we'll allow HTTPS traffic. Then click on create. Now our VM instance is being created. Once it is created, we can launch it using these options. You can open it in a browser, or you can use an SSH client to connect to it. You can also look at the GE Cloud command here, which you can use to launch the instance with these settings, using Google command line. We'll open it in the browser.
U Virtual Machine instance is ready now. You can see the details of your virtual machine by clicking on it. You can also find the equivalent REST API to launch this VM. If you click on Edit, you can make changes to your VM, like adding additional disks. Let us now create a VM instance using the command line. To create a VM instance, the command is gcloud compute instances create followed by the parameters like instance name, zones, etc. You can see our instance has been created. You can learn about all the commands through the link shown. You can also use the help command to see all the available commands you have for gcloud create instances. Let's now look at what are machine types. A machine type is a set of virtualized hardware resources available to a virtual machine instance, including the system memory size, virtual CPU count, and persistent disk limits. In Compute Engine, machine types are grouped and curated by families for different workloads. You can choose from general purpose, memory optimized, and compute optimized families. General purpose machine types offer the best price performance ratio for a variety of workloads. Memory optimized machine types are ideal for memory intensive workloads because they offer more memory per core than other machine types. Compute optimized machine types offer the highest performance per core on Compute Engine and are optimized for compute intensive workloads. There are GPUs that you can use to accelerate workloads. The table here shows the machines available. You can see which machine type is suitable for which task. Instance Groups An instance group is a collection of virtual machine instances that you can manage as a single entity. Compute Engine offers two kinds of VM instance groups, managed and unmanaged. Managed instance groups let you operate apps on multiple, identical VMs. You can make your workload scalable and highly available by taking advantage of automated services, which includes auto-scaling, auto-healing, load balancing, regional multiple zone deployment, and automatic updating. Unmanaged instance groups let you load balance across a fleet of VMs that you manage yourself. Preemptible VMs A preemptible VM is an instance that you can create and run at a much lower price than normal instances. If your apps are fault tolerant and can withstand possible instance preemptions, then preemptible instances can reduce your compute engine costs significantly. For example, Batch processing jobs can run on preemptible instances. If some of those instances terminate during processing, the job slows, but does not completely stop. Preemptible instances complete your batch processing tasks without placing additional workload on your existing instances and without requiring you to pay full price for additional normal instances. You can add preemptible instances under this additional settings section in VM instances. Preemptible instances function like normal instances but have the following limitations. Compute Engine might terminate these instances if it requires access to those resources for other tasks. Compute Engine always terminates preemptible instances after they run for 24 hours. Preemptible instances might not always be available. Preemptible instances are not covered by any service level agreement. The Google Cloud free tier credits for Compute Engine do not apply to preemptible instances. Here are some best practices to help you get the most out of preemptible VM instances. 1. Pick smaller machine shapes. It's often easier to get lots of preemptible capacity with smaller machine types than larger ones. 2. Run large preemptible VM clusters during off-peak times. The load on Google Cloud data centers varies with location and time of day, but generally lowest on nights and weekends. As such, nights and weekends are the best times to run large preemptible VM clusters. 3. Design your applications to be fault and preemption tolerant. It's important to be prepared for the fact that there will be changes in preemption patterns at different points in time. For example, it is possible 
that if a zone suffers a partial outage, large numbers of preemptible instances could be preempted, in order to make room for regular instances, that need to be moved as part of the recovery. In that small window of time, the preemption rate would look very different, than on any other day. If your application assumes, that preemptions will always be done in small groups, you might not be prepared for such an event. You can test your application's behavior under a preemption event by stopping the VM instance. 4. Use shutdown scripts. Manage shutdown and preemption notices with a shutdown script, that can save a job's progress, so that it can pick up where it left off, rather than start over from scratch. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.